welcome along uh, to today's discussion as you guys can see uh, we have a uh, very familiar couple of uh, familiar faces on the screen uh, pastor sanga de costa and brother uh, uh, kingston fernando uh, the the specialty of today's discussion is we have both pastor sanga de costa and brother kingston in one talk show uh, one discussion So uh great to have you guys back on our channel Pastor Sangeet Costa and uh uh brother Kingston how are you guys doing <laughs> Great to be with you uh brother Ramesh Ramesh Mali and great to be with you uh Kingston Mali It's a pleasure Brother Kingston how are you doing <laughs> I'm I'm doing great by God's grace and mercy and I'm really encouraged and I'm privileged and honored to be with the two of you uh sangaya and ramesh malli yeah, i'm blessed and thank you for uh, you know inviting me and thank you for having me in your channel and to be with asangaya and do this video together with you uh, ramesh malli it's great so thank you once again for having us in your channel oh yeah um, i i i count it to be a blessing to be b- with both of you guys uh, i i believe that it's a blessing of course Please. indeed <laughs> and uh, yeah i i i just uh, promise you guys who are watching us today This ain't going to be a boring discussion. So, you would listen to this uh, dear uh, pastor and dear brother until this video ends. I I promise you that. So, uh Pastor Asanga, the Costa, I don't want to really give a, uh, you know, extra description or introduction to him uh, because uh, the Christians in Sri Lanka really know who he is. But if you are somebody who knows only angels from Africa but uh not these uh, men of god or the servants of god let me introduce pastor asanga de costa to you he he's the uh, pastor of kingdom heritage church and uh, pastor asanga de costa holds a bachelor's of theology from lanka bible college and uh, he holds a masters masters in mission and ministry from harvest uh, university australia and uh, another masters in theology uh from Covenant College of uh, Ministry and Divinity uh of Canada and uh, another masters in business administration from Asia E University Malaysia also he is the CEO of uh, Equip Right uh, consulting firm as far as i understood that is related to business management and church uh, management and development so um When it comes to Kinson Fernando dear brother my I, I call him Aya and he calls me Mali so I really like 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 to do that today you know Kinson Aya uh he's a dear brother in Christ and we love him so much and uh he, he's a teacher uh, we both are teachers and uh, uh, in the educational field so uh brother Kinston holds a masters of arts in transformational leadership uh from uh, international graduate school of leadership uh, of uh, philippines and he holds a bachelor's in theology from minnesota graduate schools of theology united states i love this uh, he holds a diploma in english language and literature because I, i'm a teacher for language and literature so i like that you know he 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 holds a diploma in language and literature and many more other uh, qualifications that uh, I would have to spend a lot of time to explain that and he's been a class teacher and uh, you know for many subjects and uh, he he's still a teacher and teacher in many other international schools and also he has taught in Wesley College uh, Colombo again uh, I'm really blessed to have you guys back uh, here in my channel so Today's topic is really important. As Christians, pastor and dear brother, we are facing a crisis in Sri Lanka. We know that. Uh, uh when it comes to economics or uh, socially, psychologically, we are going through a lot. And uh not only that, we also see a crisis in the spiritual realm. If you take when it comes to the Christendom uh in Sri Lanka, so we, we know that something is not right so this is our subject today we are going to talk what's really wrong in the christendom or what's really has to be corrected so this is going to be subject for today's just stay with us
as i told you we are in a spiritual crisis this is what we all believe so dear pastor sanga i i've been just listening to uh, several speakers online and i'm trying to figure out what's really wrong and why christians in sri lanka are really sometimes misled so we recently i was listening to uh, paul washer now, now again uh, if, if you are somebody who who doesn't know who paul washer is but you know angels from africa so so that that's a problem so you need some help so that's why we are here so pastor paul washer says today's problem of all the the today's problem of christianity is nothing but these false preachers and pastors who misuse christianity do you really agree with this uh, statement and uh, according to what's the real issue in sri lanka what is the problem of today's christianity in sri lanka first we'll turn to pastor sangeeta kosa then we'll uh, turn to brother uh, kingston uh brother ramesh uh, or oh, ramesh mali i can't agree more uh, with uh, paul washer because uh, preachers and pastors teachers are mostly responsible for edifying the church I, you and i should know uh, we should know that although believers are responsible for their own spiritual growth pastors preachers and teachers play a big part in it right so uh, <clears throat> it is our responsibility as teachers and preachers and pastors uh, to edify the church that's why uh, paul says in 1st timothy 4:16 keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you new living translation so that means if we don't give our careful attention to what we preach and teach we will also we will we ourselves will lose uh, our way and also we will mislead our people those who are following us who are coming after us so it is a big responsibility when it comes to uh, pre- teaching and preaching that's why <clears throat> even james say in uh, in his uh, letter james 3:1 dear brothers and sisters do uh, not many of you should become teachers in the church for we who teach will be judged more strictly so we must know that it is it is a great responsibility to teach the word of god that's why i said he doesn't say that don't be don't become a teacher of course become a teacher pre, uh, to teach the word of god is a great calling but with that calling there is a great responsibility tied to it so if we do us a, a poor work in interpreting the word of god and uh, teaching the proper doctrines to our people Uh, we will be judged severely that means uh, our master our lord jesus christ will hold us responsible uh, to what what is being taught so therefore i believe <coughs> teaching preaching according to the word of god is very much you know it is important because we've been entrusted by our apostles who who died uh, f- in the process of giving these doctrines to us new testament doctrines they have shed their blood and the church pastors polycarp tertullian all these people uh, have died along the way uh, to uh, uh, for uh, in the process of preserving the faith and also uh, living according to the word of god you know pre- preaching and teaching has to be your talk and walk has to be uh, the same that's why uh, wicked shepherds are an ab- abomination to the lord we know in ezekiel chapter 34 god really abhors all these wicked wicked shepherds who who lead astray his people and in the same in the same token for the new testament leader or the shepherd peter says the same thing first in first first peter 5:1 let me read it uh, briefly to the elders among you i appeal as fellow elder a witness of christ suffering as one who also will share in the glory to be revealed be shepherds of god's flock that is under uh, your care serving as overseers not because you must but because you are willing as god wants you to be not greedy for money but eager to serve not lording it over those entrusted to you but being examples to the flock and when the chief shepherd appears you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away so so dear mali uh, we as preachers we can't serve 
uh, for the uh, for the sake of our own glory, for the sake of our, uh, for controlling or the money or any other privilege that is not not uh, uh, accepted by our Lord. So when you look at all these new modern day preachers and teachers, uh, when you closely examine their doctrines, it is all geared toward making a profit, making a living out of it. I don't want to mention the names, but they are multi-billionaires and they sell the hope, mm. hope for the people. They Agreed. sell a false hope for a greater price and they have these big mansions, big domes and private jets and everything. And their people, they don't receive the same blessing because these are geared towards making a, making money, making profits. So I, I think uh, the, the main problem in Sri Lanka, Mali is uh, because of these type of leaders, uh, pastors, preachers, and we, we really need to look into the matter. I think that's a helpful uh, elaboration. Uh, Kinsta Naya, what do you really think about this matter? Yeah, uh, first of all, I, I agree with uh, uh, Paul Washer in what he mentioned, saying that, uh, you know, the problem in the church is nothing but we could be pre preachers and pastors. I agree with his statement. Uh, what I also believe is just as in every sphere and sector of society, we have wicked and corrupt pastors in the church. Now, if you look at Sri Lanka, we are talking about politics. We see wicked people there and there is no difference. We see wicked people in the church as well. So what we need to understand as Christians is these wicked pastors are not part of the true church mm. that yes. belongs to Christ. They are servants and agents of Satan according to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 to 15. So uh, what we need to understand also is God has already warned us about such people th throughout his word. We see that in the New Old Testament and we also see that in the New Testament. So... Also at this time, I would like to encourage those who are listening to us to search and read the scriptures for themselves and be like the Berean believer, believers who are mentioned in Acts chapter 17, 11 and also right. to double check even what we are saying or who yes. anyone who teaches and preaches the word of God. Right. So, so I want to mention four passages. I'm going to speak a little bit longer than Asangaya. Uh, first, I want to share from Jeremiah chapter 5 verses uh, 30 and 31. And this is what it says. A horrible and a shocking thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy lies. The priests rule by their own authority. And my people love it this way. But what will you do in the end? So uh, here the word of God says that's a horrible and a shocking thing that has happened in the land. What is this horrible and shocking thing? It's not about inflation. It is not about a fuel or gas uh, queue. It is mm. not about food shortage. Mm. It, is not, it is not even uh, talking about the economy of your country. It is also not about wicked and corrupt leaders in our nation. Today, as Christians, sometimes we think, okay, all the problems in our nation is because of the wicked and corrupt leaders in our nation. But the horrible and the shocking thing that has happened in the land is connected in relation to the church. So you might be asking, what? Really? Yes, it is. You know, it is about false prophets, false teachers, false pastors, and false shepherds. I will use just false prophets to mention all these people. So there are three things here. Jeremiah says that has happened. The horrible and the shocking thing. The first is prophets who prophesy lies. We see this happening in Sri Lanka, right? And like Asangaya mentioned, I don't have to mention names, but there are so many these so-called prophets who, are, who have prophesied lies over and over and over again. And we should not even call them pastor and we should not even call them prophets. They are actually servants of Satan. And then the second thing is priests who rule by their own authority. There are so many places in Sri Lanka, so many places that are called churches, but that are, that are ruled by people with their own authority. And then by the Bible says, God says, God's people, they love it this way. They love to listen to lies. They love to be ruled under people who are ruling by their own authority. And then God asks the question, what will you do at the end? And this, uh, uh, I want to read another passage from Ezekiel chapter 13, uh, verses, verse 6. You can read verses 1 to 7, but because of time, we are not going to read all the uh, verses. But we'll just look at Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 6. And this is what it says. Their visions are false and their divinations a lie. 
they say the lord declares when the lord has not sent them yet they expect their words to be fulfilled so i believe corrupt politicians are not the curse of sri lanka mm. false prophets false teachers false pastors false shepherds are the curse of our nation and then i want to share two uh, i have shared two passages from the old testament so i want to share two passages from the new testament and both passages are words spoken directly by the lord jesus christ and both are recorded in the gospel of matthew and uh, in matthew chapter 7 verses 15 to 23 that's the first part uh, i'm not going to read it but uh, i would encourage our listeners to go through it read the passage and uh, uh, there are the lord himself has instructed us clearly how to identify these type of wicked prophets we we can identify them by their character the fruits they produce yes. we need to check the lifestyles of those who call themselves servants of god and judge them uh, this is what I, watch out for false prophets watch out be careful why because they are living a lie they come in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ferocious wolves and i would like to borrow the term that paul washer used wicked pastors so i will call these people wicked wolves we can uh, we can use the two w's wicked wolves hmm. you know they are not sheep they are coming in sheep's clothing but actually they are wicked wolves and then uh, the lord says you can recognize them by their fruits verses 16 to 20 what does that mean it is about how they live their character hmm. like azanga ya mentioned are they lying prophets we can we can see if they say something and it's not happening it's it's a lie so they are lying prophets and then do they live a life that is contradicted to the word of god a lot of these people like uh, what asanga ya mentioned in uh, uh, 1 peter chapter 5 listing the qualifications of an elder these people are totally opposite to that mm. and then are they living off innocent and poor people they are taking poor people's money and living luxurious lives uh, do they resemble christ not at all if you look at them they don't resemble christ at all and are they servants and agents of satan are they prideful or humble these questions we should ask do they boast about themselves or god today people are drawn to men because of their charisma and not their character hmm. so today we are exalting ourselves preachers and not god who is worthy of all exaltation and then verse from verse 21 onwards our lord states that everyone who calls him lord lord will not enter heaven these are strong words every christian needs to understand and remember this just because a person calls the lord lord that doesn't mean that that person is a child of god this is what jesus mentions we cannot judge men by what they say we need to judge these wicked wolves by their character and lifestyles it is only those who do the will of god who will enter heaven that's what jesus said only the child of god can do the will of god because the spirit of god lives in them and helps them to do what god requires of them a wicked wolf a person who belongs to satan cannot fulfill the will of god then the lord states that on that day that is the judgment day many will say that they prophesied in his name drove out demons in his name and that they perform many miracles can you see the pride there they have done it this is what jesus said you know these people are saying i in your name i did it Mm-hmm. but just you know so they have done it not god they attribute all these things to themselves they are advertising themselves we see this happening right they are the ones who have done them god is not in them for they for them to do these things even though they have done it done it, it in his name finally the lord will tell them plainly the bible says the lord i will tell them plainly i never knew you away from me you evil doers so paul washer says these pastors are wicked pastors and i i think the reason i am agreeing is because jesus himself said it because jesus calls this people who did these things in his name you evil doers or you wicked mm-hmm. people so the lord calls them evil doers that is what they are they are wicked wolves in sheep's clothing and my final final passage from the new testament is from matthew chapter 24 verses 3 to 5 verse 11 and verse 24 i'm not going to read the verses i encourage the people once again please read these verses read the scriptures read the bible and here here the, the lord answers a question that the disciples asked and the disciples asked a question lord what are the signs of your coming and what are the signs of the end times and what did the lord say did he mention about inflation first 
did he mention about an economic crisis did he mention about food food shortage shortages no the very first warning that the lord gave his disciples is in verse 4 and what does he say he says don't allow anyone to deceive you don't allow anyone to deceive you and in uh, in uh, 1 timothy uh, chapter 4 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 he says the spirit clearly says that in latter times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons you know this is what we are seeing that is happening in sri lanka and then in verse 5 in matthew chapter 24 uh, the lord says uh, there is going to be false christ who will deceive many then in verse 11 he mentions that many false prophets will deceive many people so we see that happening right before our eyes today it's very sad it's really sad as sri lankans to see that happening in sri lanka but we see this happening we see this prophecy being fulfilled even in our own nation uh, uh so rapidly in our nation everywhere there's so many false prophets in our nation so thereafter in verse 24 the the lord jesus he mentions both of these groups that is false christ and false prophets and states that these two groups of people will perform great signs and miracles so f- actually the false prophets is god's judgment for people who are not interested in god who are not interested in god's word instead of following god and his word sadly we see many who follow false prophets signs and miracles i also need to mention that those who follow this type of people if they are truly saved god will open their eyes and they will come out of the deception they are in but those who continue to follow them are not sheep but goats they belong to satan and follow the agents and servants of satan we can only warn them we can pray for them but i also believe it is only god who can open their eyes to see his truth so there are so many passages throughout scripture that speaks about false prophets and i would urge our listeners to search and read the scriptures so that they won't be deceived Deuteronomy 18 verse 20 Jeremiah 14 verse 14 Jeremiah 23 verse 9 to 40 Jeremiah chapter 28 Ezekiel chapter 13 Ezekiel chapter 34 like Asangaya mentioned Micah chapter 2 verse 11 you can read from verses 6 to 11 uh, Micah chapter 3 verse 11 you can read Micah chapter 3 Matthew chapter 16 verses 11 to 12 Matthew chapter 23 verses 1 to 29 Luke chapter 6 verse 26 Acts chapter 20 verses 28 to 30 2 Timothy 4 verses 3 and 4 Titus 1 Six to sixteen, two Peter one verses twelve to twenty one, two Peter chapter two, two two Peter chapter three verses fourteen to eighteen, one John chapter four verses one to six, and the entire book of Jude are some passages that you know our listeners can look look into. And in the second part of the question, you are asking, what are your thoughts on today's challenge to Christianity in Sri Lanka? Uh, so my thoughts on the challenges to Christianity in Sri Lanka today, I firmly believe that we need a church that is biblical. just as most of the things in society church has become a business for some so we need pastors and preachers who will expound and exegete the scriptures properly to the people we need a church like the berians they love the word of god they were not lazy to search and study the scriptures they didn't just believe what was preached and taught to them they double check what they heard with god's word sadly Today in the Sri Lankan church we have raised up a group of people who do not even turn their bibles they just have closed bibles in their hand they don't turn their bibles and refer the verse that verses that are mentioned right and uh, they don't check the bibles for themselves they don't read the bible god's word is a standard he has set for us and if the sri lankan church is not going to follow his word then it will have to reap what it has sown and i believe that we are already reaping what we have sown I also believe that God is raising up a people in our nation who are biblical and they love the word of God and my prayer is that their tribe will increase and I want to end this uh, question that you asked with several quotes from uh, uh, John Paul Washer himself he wrote this book uh, titled 10 indictments against the modern church I would encourage our listeners to read that book as well and he says there is a great awakening going on in this country that is he's talking about America not only in this country but also in europe south america many other places i see young men going back to the rock from we were cut they are reading spurgeon and whitefield they are still listening to ravan hill martin lloyd jones toza and wesley and it is a great incredible movement just because popular media and christianity today haven't discovered what is going on i want you to know 
that I would have never dreamed, never dreamt 15 years ago that we would see the awakening we are seeing. Not yes. through my ministry, but through what God is doing without any of our ministries. And then in his book, there are 10 chapters and the 10 chapters, one of the chapters is pastors malnourished in the word of God. And then I would end, end with the last quote of uh, Paul Washer. He says, today, because of the lack of biblical preaching, the so-called church is filled up with carnal, wicked people identified with Christianity. And then because of all the goats in the midst of the lambs, the lambs are blamed for all the things the goats are doing. And then the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of us. He's quoting uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 24. All right. Wow. That, that That's quite an elaboration. Uh, there's nothing for me to add to that. Uh, let's move on to our next question. Uh, uh, Pastor Sangha and uh, Kingston Aya, you know, uh, today's, uh, the part of today's problem is these uh, mushrooming prophets. Uh, my question is, can there be prophets in our modern society? Is it biblical to call somebody a prophet? And uh, the other part of the question is, uh, who is really a prophet? Uh, can you guys explain uh, in a nutshell? Maybe uh, Pastor Asanga, the cost of us, and then we'll go uh, turn to uh, King Sanaya. Thank you, Brother Ramesh. It's a fantastic question, <clears throat> and it is a very, very much a needed question at this hour in Sri Lanka. To, uh, to your question, let me answer in uh, threefold. Uh, let me give you threefold answer. But first, <clears throat> let me tell you. I believe personally and biblically, based on biblical uh, understanding, there are no biblical pro proportionate prophets today. The time is over, right? Let me this 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 uh, this position comes with a biblical reasoning. Let me explain it to you uh, a bit elaborately. Now. <clears throat> Prophets were given in ancient Israel for a specific season and for a specific reason. There was a season for prophets and there was a reason for prophets. Mainly, God chose one man to be his mouthpiece, right? Prophet is a mouthpiece of God, right? Uh, to communicate God, God's mind concerning a nation, mainly nation of Israel or a situation or a matter of a great concern to God. <clears throat> that is the reason. So uh, in the Old Testament time, even up to uh, New Testament, before the giving of the Holy Spirit at the Pentecost, there was no spirit of God in, in, in them, right? So uh, God chose these prophets to be his mouthpiece and the Holy Spirit was on them not in them right god was god's spirit was on them operating on them but it was not the indwelling of the holy spirit they did not know that <laughs> they were they have not become truly the children of god with the spirit of god within them that happened after jesus died for them and you know after giving of the holy spirit <laughs> since there were no spirit of God living in these people, God had to choose one man to bring his uh, His word all the time. That is the main reason for pro uh, raising a prophet to, to speak God's mind. In the Old Testament, the, the God's revelation was in the process of giving, revealing to the people of God. And prophet, prophet played a big part in it because they were the people who explained the word of God and add to it, gave all the doctrinal basis and God's mind and God's attitude towards uh, everything, about everything in life, right? And it was uh, not a complete revelation, but now God's revelation is completed. When the book of Revelation was done, the revelation of God is done. It is completed. It is finished. The last prophet was, biblical prophet was, I think, Apostle John. Old Testament prophet was uh, John the Baptist. And the last biblical prophet was John uh, 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 John the Apostle. And in AD 96, the book of Revelation was completed. Thus, the re revelation was completed within the first century. And we cannot add anything to God's revelation now. It is done. Uh, <clears throat> That's why we have a doctrine called the doctrine of the sufficiency of the scriptures. Uh, if we accept that there are prophets today, then every 
word that is proceeding from their mouth has to be taken as the uh, word of God. And it has to hold the same weight uh, with the biblical words of God. And we know that we, you can't do that. If, if we do that, where do you go and stop it? Everyone would say, okay, this is from the Lord, this is from the Lord. And they will keep adding new revelations to the scriptures. And we have to take every word of, of these people as the word of God. And, and in my Bible, there is a completion. God says, Amen. That's it. From Genesis to Revelation. And the complete revelation is over. That's why in Matthew 11, 11, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. All of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John the Baptist. That was speaking about the Old Testament prophet, the last prophet in the Old Testament era. Because he, he came before Christ. Yet even the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. Why did Jesus say it? Because now in the New Testament believer, we can know far we can know about God far better than even the John John the Baptist because the Spirit of God is living in us. Okay. We are born again, new believers. Uh, we are we are children of God now directly. We were born from heaven, and we can know about God through Christ in a deeper relationship. And not only that, we have a complete revelation. <coughs> the revelation God has given to know about everything. That's why the Bible says we are given everything for life and godliness. So the, uh, the uh, we have the spirit of God to be in us and we have the complete revelation of God. So we don't need prophets today. Yep. We don't need biblical proportionate prophets today because we have the spirit of God to guide us. <clears throat> and also we have the complete revelation of the of God. Now, Somebody might ask then, what about Acts 11 and Acts 2 and 12? There was a, a, a certain prophet called Agabus, right? <clears throat> and he was giving certain things. Now, first of all, we must know that this was not to say that, uh, you know, we must, uh, what do you call, look for new prophets, prophets every day. It was there as a recording. Uh, go, uh, the, uh, uh, Apostle uh, Luke has recorded what has happened. And we must know that is it's, it's within the first century before the revelation was written so still the the, the revelation of god is being given <clears throat> until john so this has happened i think somewhere between uh, i don't know <clears throat> uh, during the lifetime of paul <clears throat> right so <clears throat> it was there but we know after that so he, 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 it, it simply says that there was a prophet uh, and and it, uh, the New Testament revelation was still being presented. And the last part was the book of Revelation. Those who say that they are prophets, they try to match their words and their position to the biblical prophets, which is we cannot accept that, accept that because Paul says the church is built already. He has laid the foundation prophets and apostles. What is prophets and apostles? The prophetic revelation... <coughs> From Moses to, <clears throat> I would say Malachi, or you can add to uh, 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 add to it, uh, Apostle uh, um, John the Baptist, and the New Testament apostles, and they were the people who had given all the revelation and the doctrines needed to build the church. And you and I do not need any other foundation that was laid already. So, it is already done deal. <clears throat> so, who is the prophet? Let me explain very briefly. <clears throat> Thus a prophet was a spokesman for God. He spoke in God's name and by his authority. This is Exodus chapter 7, 1. He is the mouth by which God speaks to men. Jeremiah 1, 9, Isaiah 51, 16. And hence what the prophet says is not, not of man, but of God. So prophet had no voluntary part in it. He cannot say anything what he wants now these prophets even i was i was listening to one of the prophets uh, recently and he said what we say god has to do that is i'm sorry for my word is bs right because you and i can't say anything and god is not uh, bound to do what all the every whim that we you and i want to say Spo uh, prophet is a person when god commands he he's to go uh, you go and tell this, he has to go and tell that, no matter what the outcome is. Mm. And 
that is god is the one who authorizes it god is the one who <coughs> directs the prophet he has just to he has to go and say it. that's all so <coughs> what i say um, uh, dear brother is that <coughs> there are no uh, uh, prophets today but i would i would say this much there are <coughs> there is a prophetic ministry still existent and let prophetic me function. if to give you a, uh, a sort of a a, a brief uh, definition about the prophetic ministry today <clears throat> now this is my definition i'll give it and let, let let me explain it the prophetic ministry today is to take the prophetic message <clears throat> prophetic message it, that was given in the old testament and new testament consider its context under which it is spoken take the true meaning of the message and apply it to our own current co- current context which corresponds to the ancient context and expect the same response today from the people that god was expecting from today's people that god was expecting when he was originally gave it to the ancient people that means <clears throat> the prophetic ministry for today simply is that we take whatever the prophetic message that was given in the bible and we we consider the message and the purpose and the context that was given and we have to understand the prophetic ma- message with its context that was given and we get the message and we compare our own situation current cir- current circumstances in our lives and we see whether there is a pattern which we can apply pretty much like biblical teaching don't you think and we apply uh, the prophetic message that is cor- corresponds corresponds to the uh, the context today's context and simply we expect the same same response that god was expecting from the people of israel or from people of nineveh or pre- pe- people from moab that is repentance and coming back to god that's the prophetic message uh the prophetic ministry today other than that all this predicting future is incidental in the old even in the old testament it was an incidental by- byproduct i think that today's church has misunderstood the uh, spiritual gifts that is the discernment and the words of wisdom uh things like that uh, i think they have misunderstood the gifts so the discernment you know i believe still a person can have the discernment gift of discernment right and the words of wisdom and that can apply into our lives and i think this is what uh, uh, what uh, this is where the mistake was uh, done uh, but i truly believe from the word of god the revelation is complete with the book of uh, revelation and there are no new revelations so what we have is the illumination of the holy spirit uh, that means true understanding with the holy spirit uh, of the word of god which was already given right that is what we call the illumination and that is there for all of us and because we all have the spirit of god within us and the word of god complete revelation in us nobody has to uh, give us step by step uh, guidance because it was for the people of old testament who were not born again who were not <coughs> born of the spirit but people who who were carnal people who were outward outwardly spiritual or religious uh but now for the new believer is greater than the old testament prophets uh therefore i truly believe the season of prophets are over uh there there are no more uh, biblical proportion proportionate prophets and if the if these modern prophets want to equate themselves with the modern uh, ancient biblical prophets i think it's a big mistake it's a big lie uh, uh, what they're trying to do is trying to gain the control of the people and try to uh, uh what do you call this uh, that try to replace uh the holy spirit to themselves and they become the mouthpiece of god right now and try to control people and gain uh profits that's what all that's what they are after uh or maybe they are simply ignorant that's what i can say all right uh thank you pastor uh that's a good elaboration now uh kinsuna ya uh, pastor sanga says that uh, there there, <clears throat> there cannot be any prophets in the in the function of a prophet today but there could be the gift of the prophecy or like we call it the function uh the functional uh, the the uh pro- yeah. property uh, ministry yeah. in the church ministry. yeah now do you really agree with that uh, do you have anything to add to this one yes uh now uh, i definitely agree with asanga here uh, so my actually my answer can there be prophets today no and yes i will say why no and why yes 
So why no? We don't have prophets like the Old Testament today, and we don't have prophets like the New Testament today. I believe that the office of the prophet has ceased. So there, are, there can't be anyone who calls themselves I am a prophet. Hmm. There's no one like that. So if anyone calls themselves a prophet, actually they are not a prophet. They are a, they are a servant of Satan. Hmm. Simple as that. Then why yes? Why am I saying there are prophets today? Why yes? Everyone who preaches and teaches the word of God exactly. properly, properly, accurately, not for their gain, is a prophet of God. Amen. That's example, what the New Testament says. Sorry to yes. interrupt. Yes. <laughs> so when Azangaya takes the takes takes the word of God on Sunday and preaches to the people, already the prophecy is given. This is the prophecy. Amen. Right. This is the prophecy. He is speaking it. He is sharing it. Right, so who is a prophet of God? A prophet of God is a person who brings God's word to His people. So now God has given us His word. The word is complete. There is nothing that we can add. The Bible is very clear. If we add or take anything from the Scriptures, we are cursed. God's curse is going to fall upon us. Mm-hmm. So, so, uh, so why? So, uh, so if they, if they are speaking the word of God, they are bringing God's word to His people. Therefore, there are prophets. Those, so I'm talking about people who take the word of God that is given already. They don't add anything to it. They don't take anything away from it. They are prophets. They are sharing what is already there. Today, sadly, what is happening today is people want. They go after so-called prophets, looking to get a word for themselves instead of hearing God's word. They don't read the Bibles. They go, prophet, can you say something about me? What is my future? What am, where am I going to end? Am I going to go to a new country? What is going to happen for my children? They want to hear a prophecy like that, right? So they are more interested in getting a prophecy for their well-being, and they are not interested to know what God is requiring of them. They want God to grant the desires of their heart, and they are not willing to do God's will. And what did Jesus say in Matthew chapter seven, verses twenty-one to twenty-three, which we read earlier, right? Uh, which we looked at earlier. Jesus says. Only those who do the will of God will enter heaven. So these people who are actually running after these prophets, they don't want the will of God. They want a prophecy from God. And actually, like the Old Testament says, God says these prophets, prophets who prophesy, they are not prophesying what God is saying. They are totally prophesying what they want to say. And God is saying, I don't have anything to do with this. Hmm. So in simple, in simple, can there be prophets today? There are no prophets like what is mentioned in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Yes, there are prophets. Those prophets are ones who preach and teach God's word. Amen. All right, that's that, that's a profound uh, answer. I I guess. Uh, thank you, uh, King Sanaya. Now, my, my next uh, question is: When I discuss about the prophets on my channel, the uh, pastor and uh, I, uh, you know, all the time I get uh, I, I see a lot of fireworks going, you know, going on in the uh, comment section, and mostly Christians ask me, you know. How can, you, <laughs> how can you judge how can you judge you know you are not to judge it's up to god to judge so in your perspective pastor sanga can you really judge these false pre- pre- preachers and uh, so called prophets uh, do we have the right to do you know judge others as christians so what is your idea Well, thank you very much, Brother Ramesh. Once again, it's a good question. I think very important. When uh, when Jesus said, "Judge not," in Matthew seven one, uh, what Jesus said was, "Don't judge like Pharisees." That means, while you are doing the same sin, while you are engaging in the same misconducts in the same sin, don't judge others for the very same sin that you are doing, that you are that you are practicing. Right? In that sense, you don't judge. like pharisees because pharisees did that right but <clears throat> when it comes to judging the false prophets and teachers it is a new testament right for every believer it is our right to judge every yes. one of us i like that new testament right i like that yeah it is a new testament right of every believer to judge whether this man is preaching the word whether this man preached is preaching the truth we have to make a judgment we have to make a judgment it's like when you drive 
uh, on the road, right? Uh, you have to judge every second, every nanosecond. You have to judge. You have to make a judgment, so that you will be, uh, you will arrive uh, safely to your destiny. Yeah. In the same manner, that's why <clears throat> in First John four one, I'm just going to mention the scriptures. I I would urge all the listeners and viewers to read your own Bible and try to understand it. First John chapter four verse one says, "Test the spirits." I don't accept every man to your church, every message, but test the spirit. That the, that's why I said the spirit of the gift of discernment is given to you. Holy Spirit is in you, so, so you trust. trust uh, uh, test the spirit. That is a judgment. You have to test. Test means that you have to make a judgment. And First Corinthians chapter five verse twelve and thirteen says, "Expel the wicked man from among you." How you expel these false prophets and false teachers? You have to make a proper judgment with the word of God. You have to understand whether this man, what this man says, is according to the word of God and according to the character of Christ. That's how you just uh, judge according to the. Is it according to the word of God, the full message of the God, and is it uh, uh, this man's message whether it is according to the character of Christ? Mm. If that goes, uh, that that aligns well. <coughs> Then, then you can make a judgment. This man is good, or this man is evil, right? So the Bible commands us even to expel this type of false teachers and prophets. And in Romans chapter sixteen, verse seventeen, says, "Offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them." That means, if somebody preaches new doctrines, uh, the, the doctrines of this immorta, immor, immora, immortality, immortality, right? immortality. They, they yeah. immorality all the all all ways, but immortality, right? <laughs> they preach immortality that what they say is you don't die, right? And oh. some people say, "I am God." You, you can know, be uh, like God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, recently, I heard one of the angel from Africa, one angel. I don't know which angel, maybe an archangel, uh, said, "You, you know." Not. Sorry ah, to disturb yeah. you. We, sh- we should not call him angel. We should call him devil. Yeah, but the uh, devil comes as an angel, no brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah biblically right. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 right. And he's self self exhort exhort exhortation. So we have to uh, avoid them. And Second mm. Thessalonians chapter three six says, "Withdraw from them. Withdraw." That means you make a proper judgment whether this man preaches the. True gospel, and if he is not, you have to avoid them. That is a right that was given by our Lord Himself. And in Second John chapter ten, uh, uh, John two uh, and eleven, it says ten and eleven says, "Don't receive him to your house." Right? That means don't even welcome them. You know the uh, the uh, what do you call this? Hospitality is one of the great virtues in, in the New Testament. If you are a servant, if you are Christian, uh, if you are a servant of God, you have to be a great host. But in the same token, New Testament says, "Don't even receive those false teachers, false prophets, prophets to your house." Right? That means because if you listen to, that's why Jesus says, uh, give, uh, "Take heed to whom you are listened to." Right? Mm. Because if you listen to the wrong person, you will get the wrong message. That was the same sin that was first committed by Eve. Right, she was listening to the wrong man in the garden. Right, <laughs> so you have to be very careful because you are hearing. That's why Jesus said, "My sheep will hear my voice." Mm. Right, Amen. because there are two voices. One is from the Lord. One is from flesh or the devil. Right, mm. and uh, Ephesians chapter five verse eight to eleven says, "Expose them, expose them." Expose so them. it is there's no sin in exposing them, name naming or name calling. You know there are a lot of names that was given by Paul himself. He has mentioned the names, and for two thousand years, one one day one one guy called me and said, "Pastor, why you name names? You know on the, on social media, um, because everybody can see it." I said, "Man, you know the New Testament is the social media then, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And it was it is being written for two thousand years by billions of people, and we can still know their names and what they have done." You're so right. Paul actually posted in the then known social media yes. which was the new testament right so it is not not a sin it's not a immor- immoral thing to mention the names because bible commands to expose them their teachings their names 
and what they have done and in as you said uh, rightly brother ramesh it says in galatians chapter 1 and verse 8 he is cursed if someone preaches other than the gospel that was given that's why i said these modern day apostles and prophets modern day uh, modern prophetic and apostle mo- apostolic movement is replacing the biblical faith they are replacing the biblical doctrines mm. and they are reinterpreting according to their imaginations according to their whims according to their wishes according to their carnal desires they reinterpret right mm. one other i'll tell you recently i was listening uh, to uh, one of the uh, one of these prophets who has built recently one of the biggest uh, i don't know maybe dorm or church i don't know he said the god is he was quoting from second corinthians which was uh, the uh, from old testament scripture mm. and paul was quoting it and he quotes it and says uh, god says i will walk among them i will dwell among them so he says in uh, god is walking among some people god is walking among some people and god is speaking to people like us only my oh, wow. goodness he oh, wow. has elevated himself that god is speaking to only that prophet and his people has listened to him that means he is he is replacing holy spirit he is replacing the new testament right he is replacing the word of god you heard it so that's why they are cursed they are cursed so we are to identify false uh, teachers uh, false prophets and uh, and their deeds um, we ha- and we, we we should expose them uh, we should have uh, we, d- we should not have any fellowship with those people uh, expose their wicked ways we can name names and we can warn people because it is a new testament uh, responsibility and a privilege and a ministry that was function that was given to us by our lord jesus christ amen thank you pastor thank you for the you know profound elaboration here uh brother kinson i think you got a lot to say but if you kind of uh explain this in a nutshell what is your idea in in your perspective in your biblical perspective really yeah uh, again this is a this is a topic this is a question that lot of christians don't understand so many people when we share something they say don't judge don't judge don't judge yeah they have not understood this topic of judging in the new testament so they think we cannot judge at all right so actually they are confused right so they so some, some people they twist the word of god and say you can't judge a servant of god so they have not understood in the bible in the new testament all of us are servants of god <laughs> because the bible says we are all of us are the royal priest priest amen yeah. amen all of us are royal priest it's not only the pastor in the church every believer if the holy spirit is in you you are a royal priest of god you are a saint of god right so uh so they they think that you know it's in scripture it is prohibited to judge but if you really look at script, scripture like asanga ya clearly mentioned the bible commands us to judge and if you look at acts chapter 17 11 which i quoted earlier the berian christians the bible says they went home every day they searched the scriptures every day to see yeah, whether what paul, cross checking to whether yeah. what paul to yeah to whether to see whether what paul said was true now who is paul paul wrote almost 50% <laughs> of the new testament and who are we who are we who are these so called false prophets and pastors i love everyone, it everyone everyone has to be double checked everyone has to be cross examined right today in sri lanka they are saying we need to uh, cross examine every politician but we need to cross examine every pastor every prophet everyone who preaches the word of god what they are what they are preaching we need to cross examine with what is already given right so for example today now the three of us are we are doing this video and those who are watching us are judging us right you're right uh, you know they are judging our hairstyle they are judging what we have worn they are judging what we are doing you know they are judging our appearance pastor sanger's judging... beard yeah they are <laughs> judging the, they are ju- judging the way we speak all of these they are judging while they are listening to us you know so uh, so if judging is wrong then they have broken god's law right now exactly they have ju- they have ju- judged us by our, you know so uh, they have not even met us they have uh, but in this few minutes they have judged us from different angles so mm. what i'm trying to say is that all of us judge others are judge others on a daily basis mm. let's do it like what asangaya said 
as God's word has commanded. So in Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 to 6, Jesus says, the Lord Jesus teaches us how to judge. In John 7, 24, the Lord Jesus commands us to judge. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15 to 16, judging is the character of being spiritual. being spiritual. So like what Asanga, if you are a spirit-filled believer, you will judge because God has given you the spirit of discernment. discernment. If you don't have the spirit of discernment, you can't judge. Right? Yes. So 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 12 to 13, we are to judge those in the church, not others. God has not called us to judge people outside the church, but God has called us to judge people inside the church who call <laughs> themselves Christians, right? 1 Corinthians 6, 5, we are to judge matters between brothers. If there is a problem between two Christians, we are to judge. And uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 29, we are to judge preaching. When the word of God is being preached, we are to judge it. We are to check it. We are to cross-examine it. Mm. 1, 2 Corinthians 11, 4, we are to judge doctrine and teaching. 1 John 2, verses 18 to 20, we are to judge false Christians. Mm. Ephesians 5, 11, like Asanga ya mentioned, we are to judge the deeds and workers of darkness. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 16, we are to judge false teachers. 1 Corinthians 6, 2, one day Christians will judge the world. So, let's judge what God wants us to judge. God has clearly commanded in scripture what we are to judge and we have got to do that. That's our job. So remember one day we as his children will be judging the world. So I think it's good. We can start practicing how to judge from now on and be ready for what is in the future because we are going to judge the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Bible clearly says that one day, uh, especially uh, when Jesus was uh, talking to his disciples, he said, you're going to be sitting in the seat of judgments and you're going to be judging the 12 tribes. Uh, wow, that's quite a judgment. <laughs> so thank you for the explanation. Uh, uh, my next question is, uh, Pastor Asanga and your brother, you know, I see these days uh, many of the false doctrines come and uh, so-called prophets and false uh, teachers, they can say whatever they want and people just, just buy it. How can you, you know, detect false doctrine and how do you, how, how do you really embrace uh, the right or sound doctrine? Yeah, let me give you a, a, a systematic answer to that as well. <clears throat> now, first of all, <clears throat> it is not enough to know the scriptures per se. You know, like uh, so many Christians can quote the scriptures, right? I have many Christian friends who, you know, I, I would say they throw at, uh, to, uh, in your face all the scriptures, but they don't know how to understand those scriptures because understanding scripture is a different matter right in order to understand the script scriptures <clears throat> you need to understand the scripture uh, a, a scripture portion in its proper context uh, its true meaning and the purpose that was given <clears throat> and uh, not only that you need to understand why the scripture, the, the, the saying was given, why, what, what, what was the purpose. And that particular scripture portion has to be interpreted within the framework of the biblical particular doctrine. Say, for instance, about uh, marriage, you know, uh, so, for instance, uh, then you have to look for the entire doctrine from the word of God and you have to understand within that doctrinal framework. So it's not only <clears throat> knowing the scriptures is enough for a believer because you know that even Satan quoted, misquoted the scriptures to Jesus mm. and even to Eve himself, uh, herself, right? So knowing scriptures is not a, not, a, not a big thing, but you have to understand it in a proper context, right? You need to know the proper hermeneutical methods to understand it. And also we need to know that we were given apostolic doctrines by apostles in the new testament right and it was lost for many years and the reformed uh, our church fathers have found it right and they have agreed upon these doctrines which we, that's why we have all these creeds apostolic creed and Nicene creed and all these creeds uh, in our church history we had to study those as well and these apostolic preachers, apostolic apostles and the church fathers, 
they've agreed on certain things and that's why those doctrines were given to us passed down to us right and we have to we have to study those carefully and to understand that then only we will know when there's a new doctrine comes you 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 will really know whether this is uh, actually is in the bible or it is a new doctrine <clears throat> that's why uh, we have a lot of commandments in the new testament <clears throat> normally a false doc- doctrine might arise from from the wrong interpretation of scripture normally that's what happened if you have a wrong inter- interpretation method for for instance in the history we know uh, what what was the wrong interpretation uh, um allegorical interpretation for instance right allegorical, allegorical interpretation now i know a lot of catholic church you, uh, you know uh, in the history uh, they they are known for those those type of allegorical. interpretations yeah. now if you normally if you have a, a wrong uh, uh, interpretation method of course you are going to end up uh, with uh, wrong doctrines and also a wrong doctrine can arise <coughs> or create out of false selfish and carnal reasons for carnal reasons. for instance look at the latter day saints and joseph yeah. smith he was a sex, sex addict yeah. and therefore he perverted the scriptures and he had i think about 50 wives i don't know david corish joseph david smith yeah. uh, castles russell right all these people because they had this carnal and selfish reasons reasons and the the, the sad thing is even this modern day apostles and modern day prophetic movement they don't like the uh, like what is happening the doom and gloom that is happening around us so they wanted to create a b- brighter future for them in order to they create this brighter future uh, to to subdue and all these things with lands and all so they created a new new theology <clears throat> so out of uh, carnality out of need out of uh, selfish uh, desires or maybe because of the false interpretation pretty methods a false doctrine can, may arise so this is what we uh, uh, we should uh, look for if the lordship of christ is undermined if the if the scriptures are uh, scriptures and its true meanings are downplayed and the personal doctrines are introduced new new doctrines and personalities are projected above christ himself uh, and profiting from scriptures financially or any other form or shape we can determine that these preachers and teachings are false right so if if they if they downplay the importance of scriptures and uh, if they don't use the proper methods of interpreting and if they undermine the lordship of christ and also if they behave uh, um, strangely uh, Uh, if they don't behave according to the word of god and the character of christ you can just simply say you can detect that this person is false teacher so it's pretty oh. easy okay the only thing is you have to little bit have a little bit of carefully you have to look into the person and his message and his lifestyle that's all okay pastor if a person ask money for to build the biggest dome in the country <laughs> biggest church uh, you know it's not uh, it's not a biblical um, idea right it's not a biblical um, value so you you should know and then they perverse the word of god just to gain money right uh, you know that's all i can say all right uh, king sanaya do you have anything to add to this uh, what the pastor yes yeah uh, for me how can we uh, detect uh, Chris, how can a christian detect false doctrine and sound doctrine very simple like you know like asangaya said very easy it's really simple you need to know the know the word of god like the berians did in acts 1711 mm-hmm. to identify recognize false doctrine from sound doctrine if you don't know god's word you are the target of the enemy for example uh, if you look at jehovah witnesses they look for christians and they go to those houses and they are that's their target and if mm-hmm. those those christians don't know god's word they catch them exactly so, so uh, uh the enemy that is satan and his servants job is to deceive that's the only thing they want to deceive people so they are looking for people who don't know god's word if you don't know god's word you are easily you will be deceived that's why jesus said in the last days many will be deceived 
so our lord like asangaya said in um, when satan threw all the lies in the uh, garden where with temptation the lord re- replied with the word of god right so the only way that we can uh, identify false doctrine is through the word of god so jesus knew the word of god so he answered all satan's lies through the word of god in matthew chapter 4 So if you don't know his word you are an easy prey for the enemy who prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour according to 1 Peter chapter 5 8 so how can you know god's word be a student of god's word by reading studying meditating memorizing and obeying god's word and 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 to 17 tells us that scriptures help a man of god to be perfect god has given us his word so that we will be thoroughly equipped and it says ultimately to be perfect and uh, paul washer i'm quoting from paul washer because we started from paul washer in this book 10 indictments against the modern church the first chapter he says the problem with the modern church the number one problem is the denial of the sufficiency of scripture there you go right so scripture what people are saying is scriptures are not enough we need more addition and the, and the reformation answered this in 1517 the reformation answered this question scriptures are more than enough scriptures are sufficient so sadly so we have so scriptura. many yeah sadly we have so many so, so called christians and pastors today who do not open up their bibles even on a sunday so today people are listening to men instead of god and his word so so it's very easy to identify and recognize false teachers and sound teachers but for that you need to know god's word thank you pastor and uh uh kinsanaya now uh i know uh, pastor sang you are a reformed theologian and uh you know proudly Asa- <laughs> uh kinsanaya i should say he's reformed from head to the head to toe <laughs> so <laughs> So now still there, I would say there are still areas to be reformed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I would accept that. Okay. Now for me, I'm not there yet. You know, I was first first and, you know, I was more into analytic theology. You know, I adore, you know, philosophy. I I believe that theology and philosophy has to go together and I also believe that philosophy has to be redeemed. You know, I believe that. now i come came across suddenly a reform theology so i found out that this is like it's a vast it's like ocean i can't just get a little deep in and then say i'm reform christian that ain't going to work so in reform theology what i adore the most is you know if you go to 16th century if you go to you know what martin luther and even john calvin himself he said all truth is god truth so i like this way they uh, you know presuppose the truth the ultimate reality of the truth i love that I, I, in a philosophical sense so without i believe that pastor without presupposing the ultimate reality of truth or like without recognizing the authority of the scripture right w- what are we doing here we are just wasting our time <laughs> so there could be relative subjective truths you know one prophet can say something that could be true because you don't have a presupposed ultimate There's reality no of the truth. Line. There's yes. no plumb line. You're right. You're right. So uh, Dr. RC Sproul if you take he's a presuppositionalist but uh, I also believe in the evidence, you know, that's another subject to talk about. But now my question is now as you guys are reformed Christians and reformed theologians, now if I say modern Christendom or oh, the christianity in sri lanka need a reformation would you agree with me if yes can you elaborate why sri lanka needs a reformation pastor um, pastor asanga please yeah, yeah. let me go first then <coughs> okay we certainly need a uh, reformation in sri lanka because we are uh, we are um, we are um, rapidly moving away from sound doctrines in our country right and this has been happening for 20 30 odd years now in sri lanka we get all these new doctrines new theologies just like uh, uh, the the bible i think jude says you know like uh, come with every every wind 
right we are we are we are moved away from ev- uh, moved by every wind of doctrines uh, so uh, and you know we have a lot of pop pop theologians in our con- country popular theologians as uh, ramesh mali has rightly said uh, uh, rushant has rightly said uh, they are they are uh, you know charismatic leaders not the they they that character is not there but their charis- charisma, charisma really have enticed the masses so mm-hmm. <laughs> of course mm-hmm. now <clears throat> Uh, these minist- ministers are, you know, really misleading the flock uh, towards unbiblical um, destinies to build the biggest dorms or build the biggest ministry to become rich and famous, healthy and wealthy, immortal, immortal, you know, and gaining the gov- government recognitions. And, you know, now we have that also, you know, the government, if the government gives you a doctorate, you accept it and you become doctor, you don't know anything about the word of God. So because of this type of things, the biblical Christianity has to be uh, brought back uh, you know you have to you have to bring back the apostolic doctrines that was uh, entrusted to us by our apostles and you need to really dig into the scriptures and to really have the whole the divine plumb line the, which is the word of god against all these doctrines and we need to uh, bring back the uh, apostolic uh, new testament doctrines and need uh, to foster a biblical Christian values in our society, a culture, norms, and lifestyles. And let me tell this, uh, Mali, the Reformation, of course, we need a, some sort of a Reformation in our country, and let it be a theological one. We need uh, sound doctrines, we need biblical doctrines back in our churches, b- biblical preachings back in our churches, not as you said, self self-help you know like type of um, um, <clears throat> preachings uh, reformation is hard it may face a lot of persecution from the people of God just oh. like the good old days good old the days. church will come against this because they are being deceived and they are being uh, you know uh, we, we, when we shake the nest it is very uncomforting discomforting you know the discomfort or the I think that's the right word you know it's not comfortable at all so <clears throat> But someone has to pay. Uh, someone has to uh, have the willingness to pay the cost, right? So people like you and I, people like Rushant, the people like Ramesh, people like uh, some of the people I know, some of the young young preachers, young teachers. You know, you, we will have to um, pay this. Uh, uh, we, we 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 need to. We are. We should be willing to pay the cost of this opposition that might come from the church uh, within the church itself. And people will call you so many things. Uh, they will say you are harsh. Uh, your words are uh, too sharp. Uh, no love in it. Hey, love has different uh, modes, right? If you are uh, walking in the train uh, tracks and you can't uh, shout and you don't hear and you have earphones and the train is following you, you shout out, but he doesn't hear. Then what do you do? You at least take a take a brick and you know. Yeah hammer the fellow so that he will turn around and see who hit him so that at least he might see the train and right uh, jump right uh, in time so uh, so this 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 exercise will be difficult but it is needed oh thank you pastor uh, uh king sunaya uh, i will i will uh, start off with something that i read today uh, with because uh, asangaya mentioned that it's it's going to be difficult i just want to share an example uh, it's, I'll read this. It says, When Charles Spurgeon spoke out against the theological shift of his denomination, he mm. was rebuked by a vote of 2000 to 7. Oh, wow. So when Charles when Charles Spurgeon, there, there was a theological uh, shift in his denomination and then he, you know, but his idea, 2000 people disagreed with him. Only 7 people agreed with him. Right? So it's, it's, it was difficult, right? And then uh, at the end, he says, don't make the mistake of thinking, thinking that because the crowds have numbers that they are in the right. Just because, you know, there are so many people on the other side, it doesn't mean that they are right. So uh, like Asangaya, I, I firmly believe that the church in Sri Lanka needs a reformation. Right. Uh, the reformation that happened in 1517 was not the first reformation of the church. And it is also not going to be the last. Last. Yeah, exactly. there have been several. God has been reforming the church, I think, from the beginning. So reformation is an ongoing process. 
exactly. ongoing process that's why that's why if you come to the book of revelations chapters you know there are so many letters to the church what is god expecting god is expecting the church to be reformed hmm. right so the church in sri lanka should always measure itself with god's word and make the necessary changes it should accordingly so every time the church is far from god's word it needs a reformation all right so therefore the church in sri lanka absolutely needs a reformation now and also in the future mm-hmm. and i will i will end this with something very very important that uh, uh, paul washer mentioned i'm quoting only from paul washer mm-hmm. i read this book while staying in a fuel queue uh, you know for 30, he says 30 hours 30 hours just to get 5 liters of petrol so he says see to it that your knees are bleeding before you begin any sort of reformation yes. i'll read that again i'll read that again see to it that your that. Knee, see to it that your knees are bleeding before you begin any sort of reformation that's profound wow thank you very much i think uh, i enjoyed today uh talk a lot like i learned i myself learned a lot from these guys and uh, i i i hope uh those who were watching us so far enjoyed and also not only just enjoyment uh, they learned and gained some wisdom from what we've been uh, discussing so far so uh pastor sang uh what can we say brother uh kingston uh I just want to say a big thank you and uh, I know you guys are busy and going through a lot uh, in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka the situation Lord have mercy. Uh we don't know it's out of our control only God can help so we are praying for Sri Lanka and praying for your church pastor Sangha and uh brother uh, Kingston we are praying for your family and uh whatever you are you know laying your hands on so we are praying for Sri Lanka. So thank you so much for coming in. Uh, I know we've got a lot to you know talk on the same subject, you know. Uh but I think uh for today it's it's enough. <laughs> And uh we believe that uh today's Christianity need a reformation. We three we three believe that. I hope you would join us. So if you can't join us today maybe you can join us some day let's begin this reformation only god can help us so let's pray that god would bring a reformation to christianity today in sri lanka again uh, back again uh pastor sanga thank you very much for coming in uh, thank you man. brother kingston thank you so much for coming in hope to see you guys back here in our channel again uh, so if you have any uh, thoughts and comments just you can comment and you can like our videos and share our videos and even subscribe to our channel thank you for staying so far until we see you guys again bye bye god bless you